I'm at the Influencer Marketing Week and today I'm going to be one of the speakers and I'll be talking about the importance of influence marketing in the real estate. So let's see, I'm sure I'm going to learn a lot myself from that event. It's about how is influencer marketing doing in real estate? I think this is really interesting. Experience real estate broker with a demonstrated history of working in the real estate industry. Welcome, please, the broker, founder at Walton Real Estate, Dan Smitha. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? First of all, I'd like to say this guy, you're the great one. And guys, if you're in the influence marketing, you need to know who's the Alex Harmozy. This is 100%. This is someone that, I'm in the real estate. At first, um, in the business I am, when I'm talking about influence marketing, in the marketing, social media marketing, right? All that marketing, people kind of cannot connect the dots because it's, real estate is kind of old fashioned type of thing. And a lot of companies, they don't use social media at all. And Alex Harmozy, Alex Harmozy is someone that I'm looking up to, to be honest. So anyway, my name is Dennis. I'm a real estate broker. I have a found company 13 years ago. And I do have my social, of course, media accounts. I have my YouTube channels. I have um, Instagram accounts, TikTok. We try to use everything. And I can tell you in my business, you, I don't know if someone here in the real estate, in my business, sometimes sale can take five, six, seven, eight years. So I have to be patient enough to, um, to stay in contact with that, uh, with that lead, right? With that client. And if I can do it in my business, I think you can do it every business that you're into, like any business, literally any business. So let's talk. First of all, why to partner if we're talking about real estate, but in general, right? It's applied to any business that you do. Uh, why to partner with the influencers? Influencers, they do have trust. They have a trust with their followers, their uh, followers on any platform, right? So once you work with a someone, you pretty much, uh, depends like if it's uh, collaboration free, if it's paid collaboration, you are, you are getting trust of their followers, as I said, for free, or if it's uh, uh, paid, it can be, like for example, I can tell you from my experience, we had multiple different uh, collaborations, and free is not always like bad, or paid is not always bad. So you have to use both ways of uh, working with the, uh, with the influencers. And you have to use their trust with their followers. It's really important because it's something that like, I can talk about it a lot, so I'm trying to kind of squeeze my thoughts, uh, but I can uh, take, it can take more than 30 minutes for me. So you have, to, you have to work with influencers to use that advantage in the business that you guys, uh, that you guys do in the real estate. Once I started, it's been, um, yeah, I would say about seven years ago. Seven years ago, I first started doing my YouTube channel and uh, working with the influencers. Back then, even back then, people, yeah, yeah back then people, they uh, couldn't believe that you can sell two, three, five million dollar real estate through social media account, Instagram, YouTube, and other platforms. I can tell you from, uh, from uh, my experience, we've done sales. Um, I had sales from Instagram, person bought 15, one, five million of real estate just through DM. And that's how it works. It works at every niche. Targeted audience, it's important too. Um, since we started working with the influence marketing, it's really important to pick people you work with because we can, in my business, in the luxury market, you cannot, um, you cannot work just with everyone, right? You have, to, you have to choose your audience. You have to look, you have to follow first, right? You have to follow people that you'd like to collaborate with and you have to see what type of content they create. You have to see if uh, 
um, if that uh, content relate to you, right? If you um, kind of can pre-qualify, right? What type of people follow them, and if it works, if it fits for you, then of course you have to go for it and try to work with that person. Storytelling, yes. Real estate is not just about the properties. In my business, as I said, it takes longer to make that sale, and sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> Uh, you don't know what can lead to that sale. For example, I can do property tours of, uh, I don't know, some kind of penthouse, right? Five years ago on the YouTube. And then I can get requests from that person. That person can follow me on, uh, from YouTube to Instagram. And then I can get requests from that person to buy something or to sell something in, uh, in Miami. Or I can talk about, uh, we can do for example, neighborhood tour, or I talk about coffee shops in the neighborhood. Content is a key. And collaborations with the influencers, right, they can be different. If my business is about real estate, it does not have to be only about real estate. You have to try different things. And what I can tell you, you have to try things, guys. You have to try, like, this is how it works. That's the name of, name of the game, right? You cannot stop trying, right? You have to always, try using different channels. If um, you're good with uh, Google Ads, for example, if we're not talking about influencer marketing, if you're good with the Google Ads, you have to try different things. You have to try TikTok, for example, or to try influence marketing on YouTube. You have to always be creative, and if you are happy with what you have, then I think this is the best moment of try something else, because this is, this is how it works. If uh, for example, I'll tell you from my experience, right? If uh, our campaigns works well and we're getting great results, we always try something. And if it didn't work, we spend three, five, ten thousand on something, on the articles, for example, on the collaborations, and it didn't make back any money. You have to understand this is investment. This is all this investment. And back to influence. Influence marketing, back to influence marketing. If you're picking people that you're gonna work with, uh, important is to look who you're gonna work with because it's not just about that collaboration, it's about type of content you're gonna create with and if you create content that does not really resonate to your audience or if uh, it seems it's not really natural because it has to be connection, right? When you work with someone, when you work uh, uh, with your clients, when you work with the people, it has to be always connection. And when we're looking for people, if we see someone that does not resonate to our business, is if the person, I don't know, like too cocky, right? Or too arrogant, something. It's just, it's not what we're looking for. We're looking to build a relationship because it's not just one time, uh, sale, right? If you can call it sale. We're looking to build relationship and uh, this is something that is going to be seen from the other side, right? From the YouTube or from other um, platform and people, they can feel it. And if they see there is not real connection, trust me, it's easy to see. I'm not talking about every business, but I'm talking about my business particularly because I said you are in the uh, in a transaction for many, many years. And this is something that you have to pay attention to. End of my, but it's not the end and I will continue to talk. Uh, interesting. Anyway, so uh, a couple of things that you have to pay attention when you look for influence, influencers, right? The count of followers, it's not that important for sure. You have to look at the, at the you have to look at everything, right? First, you have to follow that person. Second, you have to look how many uh, comments has, how many likes, how many views, right? Then you have to, what do we do, right? We are in contact with that person and we see how that person reacts. Uh, and I can tell you, a lot of people, they don't, um, in influence marketing, right? Uh, like leaders of opinion, they are, don't do, don't, keep it as the business, right? They keep it as the kind of pleasure, right? If we're trying to get in contact with someone and they don't answer, then we're trying to schedule someone, they don't come on, uh, on time. This is uh, all of those things, it's very important because if you take it as a business, if you look at those people as the, as the business relationship, 
then you will have a better, much, much better results. Because it's happened with me when we uh, agree on some terms and that person just forget about, <laughs> about something like after, I don't know, like a month or a couple of months. Then you have to, of course, always it's better to have a contract, right? You have to create contracts with the people. Yeah. It's also very important, right? Depends on what stage of your business you are, right? Uh, if you're beginning, it's uh, slightly different, right? You try something and uh, maybe you don't have money to to have a higher attorney to create a contract, contract right, or, or for something else. But if you, at a certain stage of your business, you have to pay attention to those things because it's all everything, it's everything that is gonna make a big difference for you. Uh, other things you have to also uh, pay attention to is uh, relationship between you and that person and the way you're gonna build. In my uh, experience, I had a lot of uh, collaboration, they were for free. I have uh, guys with a, uh, yeah, with over a million followers on YouTube, I didn't pay anything to them. Because it's all about personal relationship. You can meet someone um, somewhere, right, on a conference like this, and you can build a relationship with that person. It can cost 20, maybe 30,000 to work with that person if you are try to kind of uh, find someone online. But if you meet someone in person, it can make a huge, huge difference. It can save a lot of uh, money first, and the second, back to building those relationship, relationships. People can see it and they can feel it from, uh, from the side if this is something that um, unique, right? Or is just a paid and there is no bond between, between you and that influencers. Um, guys, I'd like to ask questions. Is everybody here in an e-commerce business or something else? Everybody e-commerce? No? What type of business are you? Oh, you do real estate, perfect. You're a real estate agent or? Nice, good luck with that. If you have any questions, you let me know. Uh, but guys in e-commerce, what I see from, uh, from my kind of experience, right? I cannot tell you because I'm not in that business, but as I mentioned, my transactions can take much, much longer, can take years, five, six, seven, ten, 10 years to close. If you're in the commerce where your sales, they are like within a week maybe, or same, same minute, pretty much, if someone click on your um, web page, right, or if they come from social media, you need to understand something. For you, it's much easier to close that person. It's just you need to use every channel. You need to use email marketing, you need to use uh, retargeting, you need to use influence marketing at first, right? You need to use every channel. If you have a salespeople, use salespeople to close that transaction. But as many channels do you, do you, you use, is better conversion rate you're gonna have. Uh, we use everything. We use email marketing, influencer marketing. Uh, we, I have salespeople on my team. I have actually like uh, two different types of salesperson. I have people who pre-qualify, then people who are close transaction, actually, actually three. On each transaction, I have three different uh, type of people. They are, clo they are closing transaction. And if you have something on the smaller checks, right, it's much, much easier to uh, to close it, that transaction and you have to be um, not to give up right if your marketing budget is not kind of spent properly at the beginning you need to um, adjust this is also an important thing when I started spending money on uh, ads right first on uh, I started with the ads so yeah, seven years, years ago with the ads I found real estate a real estate ads agency right uh, they told me they're gonna, uh, they know everything, right? And they promised me they will uh, deliver great results as everybody does, I guess. But the thing is, um, it's not just you hire someone and you wait for them to give you great results. It's a game, it's a partnership, right? You have to work with them, you have to create campaigns, you have to, you have to really work together. And Again, it's all about the personal relationship as well. If you pick one company and you think they will do everything for you, it's not always like that. I changed a few different companies and now I'm about to, uh, I'm building my team within, uh, within my company to have, um, uh, to have kind of more um, leverage, right? Because if you have a team within your company, of course you will have more leverage to create better campaign to work with more people and to sell more product. 
So make sure if you invest in something, don't give up ever because like this is not how it works. You, you cannot give up like at all. If you're in a business that you like, like never give up guys. If you're in a business that you don't like, you have to switch to something that you're gonna enjoy because it's, this is how it works. And it's, in my business, I started 13 years ago since day one, I was so excited about it. I never felt like it's my job, like ever. Before I was working, originally I'm from Russia, by the way, I'm in uh, Miami for 17 years, and I used to work at the restaurants, at the stores, and different, like, you just name it, guys. I didn't speak English at all, and I didn't have any experience. And uh, when I started real estate, for me it was, wow, I love it, you know, I can talk nonstop, <laughs> and I can work nonstop from the 6 a.m. till like 11 p.m. And this is something, if you find it, guys, you have to do it. If you don't know what's, uh, what's your passion, you have to try things, you know, especially in the environment that we have right now, I see a lot of people younger than me, right? You have to try things, guys. You have to try things. And why I said younger, right? For you, social media, it's, uh, it's a little different than for me, right? For you, it's like you, you can use it, um, like more comfortable, right? And you have to take it as an advantage. I, I have people in my team that never been in a real estate, they never been in Miami and they sell real estate in Miami and they are in uh, like Europe, uh, Latin America, Russian speaking countries. And they work for me for five, six years. They make really good money and they passionate about it. So the way I see it, right? And I hope the way they see it, the same thing. Uh, they are passionate about what they do, right? They have opportunity to work uh, from anywhere in the world and they can build their career, their career. So same thing I wish for everyone. If you don't know what you wanna do, try things, don't stop. Once you find something, just build it, build around it. When I started, I was agent just by myself. Then after two years, I opened my brokerage and it's been 13 years journey. Now I have, a, uh, now I have about like 25 guys in, uh, in my team. Before I have 65 agents, but it was 65 agents. But in Miami real estate, a lot of agents, they are not like, they're not passionate about what they do. And they uh, just work as a part-time. They uh, work because they hurt. You can make money in it. Look, money is good, but it's not everything. Trust me. I see a lot of people, they make money like a lot. Like this is my... Uh, everyday routine, right? And I see those people who are with the money, but they are not happy with the life. And you need to understand that as well. As well, You cannot just chase money and forget about other things like that more important life, uh, mental health for sure, and the people around you. So don't forget about that. And once you find your passion, build, like build career out of it. Never give up. In my... Um, journey it was uh, good days bad days worse days and even by the way even the marketing agency i start to work with they were the first one who proposed me to do this type of structure they said okay we're gonna we're gonna provide you with the leads uh, let's create a sales team and we're gonna get part of the commission from it i said okay why not let's try it so for a year we try to do something out of it. For a year, guys, I didn't have any uh, sales. I didn't close any, anything. So for a year, I was investing my time, my money, trying how it works. After a year, <laughs> that's funny, but they told me, look, this is not working. I'm sorry, but <laughs> we, we, we cannot continue to work. They told me. And I said, okay, look, it is what it is, guys. It's not working, but I'll find a way how it's gonna work and I'll continue uh, I'll continue to push that direction. And pretty much I, that's what I did. I continue to work in, the, in that direction. I found the ways how, how that can work. And uh, now I'm here, as I said, I have about like 20 plus guys in my team from different, uh, uh, from different parts of the world and they all enjoy what they do. I have four guys in my social media department. They help me with the content creation, editing uh, and, and everything. And uh, I only look for for those people that are really interested to be, uh, if it's social media department, to be there, right? If it's a sales, uh, they want to be in a sales because <laughs> I realized if you find someone 
and that person does not want to be there, I don't want to be there neither. You know, it's, if you find your partner or your someone who's working for you and that person is passionate about it, it's guys, it's much easier to work with that person. You don't have to ask that person to do something. My guys, for example, right now, I can guarantee Yana, she's been in contact with Oscar right now. She's in Belarus, but she's coming in the States, hopefully uh, within a few months, she won a green card. And um, right now, probably like 10 p.m., I can guarantee if I'll send her a message right now, she will reply within maybe three to five minutes. And that's how my team built. Everybody's on point. I'm not asking, by the way, I'm not like that type of uh, boss leader, right? I'm gonna tell him, hey, you have to work 24 seven because I am telling you because your life is going to be miserable and you have to work for me. No, that's not how it works in my team. I tell everybody, look, we work a lot. If you are open to do the same thing, please welcome on board. I'm not gonna ask someone, you have to, you know, and they enjoy it and it's much, much easier to work with the like-minded people. It's just black and white, guys, seriously. If you're looking to build your team, to if you're looking for partners, right, you have to look for this type of person. Because from my experience, when you find someone, even the uh, companies that you collaborate with, right, or your partners, and you're trying to, I don't know, create something, and you send that person a message and that person does not reply, and you're like, come on, seriously, for, for, for a day, for example, or for a few hours. And everything is uh, adjust to timing, right? Sooner you're gonna make it done and better for you, better results you, you're gonna have. So, any questions you'd like to ask, guys? No questions, how come is that? Like, seriously, you know everything? Like, questions about anything, guys. I'll tell you, by the way, one more thing. Don't be shy to ask questions, and the best habit you can have, just one second, I'll ask you, best habit you can have is just to ask questions. This is most important thing. It's like kids, you know, kids, they're like, what is this, what is that, what is this? How come to do, how to do this? It's just a habit. If you will have that habit, trust me, you will change your life. Yes, please. I was just asking what type yeah, of videos but, uh -huh. influencers you feel that audience reacts more and relates with Okay, um, I, I would say it depends for influencer, right? Uh, for example, I have a friend of mine, he lives in LA now, he has about like over a million like followers, right, on, uh, on the YouTube only. And uh, with him, we, uh, particular with him, right, we did, uh, we did collaborations, I remember we did for neighborhood, for example, because he's talking about, generally about different states, um, life in the United States, and we did collaborations on the neighborhoods. Then we did collaboration on uh, General in Miami, how's life in Miami, with him in particular, right? I had another uh, channel, they do have more than, like now probably more than three million followers uh, on YouTube as well. And with them, we did collaboration, we went to Porsche Tower. So the channel is about unique things uh, in the world. Like there's, if there's a new car is coming out, when the Tesla, Plate came in, they were the first one who did a, a presentation about the car. And with them, I went to Porsche Tower, it's a building in uh, Sunny Isles Beach, and it's a unique building because elevator can take you with your car to your apartment, no matter what floor it is, like 20 years, 30 years, 50 years, floor. so it was uh, relative to their uh, followers, right? And you have to always look, As I, that's why I said you have to follow your influencers, right? You cannot just reach out to them and right away, also, how to say that, you have to pre-qualify them, right? You have to follow them for some time and kind of see what they post, right? And then you have to be creative what you can do with them. If you come up with a, some kind of content and it's not gonna uh, be same as what they usually do, right, on a daily basis, you're not gonna have uh, good results. That, that's the very important part, right? Uh, so you, you can tell the influencers what kind of video you're looking for, or do you give them creative freedom to do what they want? Like, you know, they kind of portray the concept however they feel um, their audience would respond? I would say uh, both, right? I uh, ask them as well if we can do something. And uh, we kind of brainstorm what we can do together, right? Because I tell them what uh, 
what I can do, right? For example, I give them, I have uh, access to luxury houses, like waterfront houses. Who I have, um, as I said, Porsche building, for example. Uh, or I have, uh, actually, uh, I think in a couple of weeks, one influencer coming, he's, uh, he, what he usually does, he uh, takes videos about unique neighborhoods in every uh, like city in the world, right? Last time he went, he did, by the way, he did an uh, interview with the Maduro from Venezuela, the president, I think, in Venezuela. Uh, he did an interview with uh, President Maduro in Venezuela, and what he does, he goes to different cities and he's um, taking interviews with the people in the city, in the country, and plus he's showing the unique neighborhood. Unique, unique neighborhood, what I mean by that, uh, he went to Tokyo and he, he showed, how you call it, like a mafia in Tokyo, you know, those type of guys, and he shows neighborhoods. Here he wants to go to different, like Little Havana, for example, to Little Haiti, right? And other neighborhoods, it's not like common, for example, South Beach or Design District or something like that. Something different, different picture of the city. That's what he does. Yeah, and that's resonate to his uh, viewers. And that's what you usually have to kind of look for, right? And that's, of course, as I, as I mentioned, you have to be uh, in contact with the influencer and they will tell you what is going to make more sense. Yeah, thank you for the questions. So, five more, guys. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Anyone else? No more questions. I guess that's it. Guys, thank you very much for listening. <laughs> thank you for your time. Just a quick question. What do you think about the real estate growth here in Korea in the last couple of years? I can tell you not just what I think, I can tell you about most of the agents who's been in the business like more than 10 years. Perfect, so would you recommend people invest in real estate market here in South Korea? Yeah, definitely, for sure. But you have to, uh, depends what you're looking for, right? You have to pay attention to if it's new development, you have to pay attention to stage of the new development, to what type of uh, product and everything. But uh, Real estate in general in the South Florida seems very, uh, very I would say positive to to invest. Plus, look, I can tell you, uh, real estate it's not just about um, to make money within one or two or three years. This is the long term, long term uh, projection, right? To invest and you look into um, you look into how to say that to protect your uh, money, right? Um, I'm originally from a different country. I'm originally from Russia, right? And uh, I do have a lot of uh, clients. They are from different countries, from Latin America, Russian-speaking Europe. And the thing is, if you bought something five, seven years ago, one million dollars, and you from Venezuela, and right now that million dollars compared to uh, their currency, it's a way different amount of money, right? And same thing with the Russia, for example. If you bought something eight years ago, one million dollars in rubles, right? Right now it's pretty much like triple. <laughs> Even if the price of the real estate did move a five percent, right? But and prices also change. Even within uh, three, four years, some of the prices double, like literally double. This is not exaggeration. Literally double from five hundred thousand units or houses and up to 10, 20, 30 million uh, dollars in uh, real estate. My name is Dennis, I'm uh, a real estate broker. I do have a real estate company. I love Miami, I've been here for 17 years. Work with influencers and uh, with the marketing in general. I don't use AI in influencer marketing, but we do use AI. One of the cases I can tell you, um, I used to do articles, right, to uh, different magazines. And my, um, I would say, weak spot was when um, my PR girl, she sent me a uh, questions and she's like okay we need to come up with an article and for me it was always hard to start 
you know, because you're busy within your day, you have a lot of tasks, and she sent you like five, 10 questions, you have to create an article. I'm like, oh my God, my brain like, no, 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 we, we're not gonna do it, we're not gonna do it. And once I start AI, using AI, I just, <laughs> to be honest, I just copy paste those questions to ChatGPT. ChatGPT came up with a full article. I, of course, adjusted to like kind of my language, and then I sent it back to her within, within like minutes. minutes. Yeah, like within minutes. And I had maybe 50, 70 articles within like a month. And some of them, they are synchronized to Yahoo Finance, CNN, and other things. And I can tell you, this is my experience of AI. Uh, it's very, very helpful. Now also what we're trying to do, we're trying to, we already tried once, now we need to try again, uh, that AI pre-qualify our uh, leads. Right. So pretty much we connect it to our uh, database of uh, conversations. Now we're trying to connect it with uh, like uh, MLS, it's a Miami uh, database of uh, real estate. And to have AI to pre-qualify people and to see if they're real, to look what type of properties they're looking for, neighborhoods, and all of that. And this, this is my experience on AI. Now that we've spoken a little bit about the future, let's talk about, about the present. I've noticed, you know, just in my career, the sure. shift of um, these budgets being put into inputs for marketing. And I know you guys see that every day. Uh, how do you see this present really catapulting the future of those budgets? How do you I would say, like everybody already mentioned what I wanted to, but in general, yeah, I would say influence marketing, it takes um, like five, six, seven years ago, it was a big difference. As I said, I started seven years ago doing my kind of digital marketing in general, and you can see how people look at it. As I mentioned, right, even in my business, real estate, there's a lot of uh, agents, brokers, realtors, they are, um, they are from the old school, right? And for them, even just to use social media, Instagram or YouTube, I'm not talking about collaborations with the influencers. It's already for them, it's kind of uh, step up. And you see people, they do collaborate with influencers and you see they are spent mo money on it, budgets, right? And uh, from my experience, right? It's like you cannot, how to say that, uh, when you get leads and you know how much the lead cost, it's easier, of course, to uh, put in your mind, okay, I spent where, like 5,000 and you get a certain amount of leads and you can do the numbers and you understand how, how long it's gonna take time to close it. With the influencer marketing, you like, um, you just try and things, right? You don't know how fast you're gonna get that money back. Of course, if you, as you mentioned, if you have some extra budget, and you are willing to try thing, things, and you have to, my opinion, right? If you want to grow, you have to try things. Otherwise, it's just, uh, this, is, it's, this is not how the things work, right? In the business, uh, unless you don't wanna do anything. So influencer marketing is something, yeah, you have to try and you have to find what type of collaborations is gonna work for you and how fast, how soon you're gonna get that, um, that I would say, return on investment. You just gave me another idea, like, it's a guy, he's like... <laughs> I'll give you my Zell in a minute so you can transfer me some money. Okay, I will, man. And uh, look, it's just a way of thinking, right? Uh, when people think in short term and long term, right? Somebody wants to have money right now, and someone is thinking, okay, I'm okay. Oh. And someone is, uh, no, uh, I'm okay to wait, for example, and I know I can sell, I uh, will make more money. It's just, uh, I'm working in sales, right? There's a lot of people, um, they are, it's just a way of thinking, right? They, they prefer to get, to get it right now. And there's some other people, they're like, no, 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 no. I'm confident enough. I prefer just to wait and I'll get better results. I'll make more money and I'll build better relationship, for example, with you in that case, right? I like the crowd here and I'd love to get some wisdom from you guys for them as to what whether it's marketing campaign or if you were to give advice on becoming a creator or an influencer, what you learned, you know, dealing with the industry. So I'd love to go around and you know, just share your wisdom with your and what you feel they would really benefit from. Uh, what I add that if you are a creator, right, if you're starting, my suggestion is. Um, 
it's like a business. T uh, look at yourself as a business. If you work with someone, if that person uh, send you a message, check your check your mailbox, right? Or check your inbox on Instagram. If you agree on something, if you said you will have a call at 11 a.m. tomorrow, then make sure you're gonna call that person. Treat other part as the business. And this is the, I'm in the sales and real estate, right? This is the biggest problem in general, not just for creators in general with the businesses, right? And when you work with someone and you see that person very, very business oriented, it's much, much easier to work with that person. And if you just started, trust me, you will grow your business faster than you just treat it as the, as the hobby. So this is my uh, suggestion. Failure, uh, failures. Um, so I would say from, <laughs> from my life, uh, first of all, I, I told you a story about when I started doing digital marketing and the agency that I've been working with, one of the guys told me, look, that's it, we cannot continue. We don't know how to figure out, right? And so pretty much he and another guy told me, look, you're riding that horse and you don't want to get up. And I'm like, I, um, I'll tell you the story how I got my real estate license. First, my English was, was not that, as good as uh, I speak right now. And I tried to pass my exam five to seven times. So I'm that type of person. If I need to make something work, I'll find a way how it works. And the failure is my opinion, right? This is just your experience and uh, you want to learn from it or you want to call it failure. I mean, it depends how, like, how you look at things, right? Because if you try to do it again, over and over again, then your failure will become your goal, right? Experience. Whatever you experience, exactly. So that's, uh, that's my five cents. So you all have very good backgrounds and you know, you have a very personal bit. I'd I will add a couple of things. One is just uh, never stop asking questions. It's a great habit. You like you like you have to make it as a habit. I'll give you a couple of examples uh, from my uh, life experience. I had a conversation with a client. He was in the oil business. I didn't know anything about it. Guys had productions in a different country, so I had a conversation for like 40 minutes with him. Then I make another call within like two hours. And there's a new kind of lead, let's call it client, right? And he's in the same business. And I'm talking to him like I know something about his business. And it's just two hours time difference. And that's because I always ask questions. When I meet someone, I'm like, okay, what type of business you do? Like blah, blah, blah. Not because I want to know how much he makes money. It's just because I'm really passionate to learn things, you know, about everything. Sometimes I remember I met, I was at the Burning Man a couple of weeks ago, and there, there was a guy, he approached me, uh, he was uh, at the Hollywood doing something, and he started asking me questions first, telling tell about his business, and then I uh, kind of convert that uh, trajectory of the conversation. I started asking him so many questions, and he's like, you want to do the same business? I'm like, no, I'm just curious about your business. And another thing I would say, you have to, you have to believe in yourself. You have to dream, right? Like if you want something, you need to understand that you can achieve anything, like literally anything, especially in this country, you can achieve anything. I, uh, I do work with uh, people like at certain uh, level of uh, income, let's call it that way, right? And most of them, they started like literally from nothing. 10 years ago, 20 years ago, five years ago, 30 years ago, they all started from something. They just built their career because they were passionate and they never gave up. And this is the most important part, just never give up and do it. I do in my business, I don't do it like, uh, because okay, I need to give something. Sometimes when I go to a meeting in Miami Beach, I know there's a true love uh, bakery in the Sunset Harbor. They have a, one of the best croissants and bakery in the, and if I go there and I want to stop by to get a coffee for me from Panther Coffee is right next to it and I see they open I just get fresh bakery because I buy it for myself all the time and if I have a meeting I just bring it and when the people don't expect anything and I not just give it to them because okay here I have to give it I tell them look this is the true love you have to try it you know I'm not asking them I'm like you have to this is one of the best bakers and they feel like wow this is something so it's yeah. really it's really uh, you have to, you know, give it from your heart. Absolutely. What I would say, it depends 
you know, I had the different stages of my life, right? When I was 20, for me, balance was working more, for example, and um, I didn't have a family back then, right? And um, that was my priority, work more and more and more. But still, like, I, I, I've been in Miami for 17 years, right? And Miami is, a lot of you know, it's a party city. But me personally, for 10 years, I used to wake up at 6 a.m. and go to gym. Then I had like scheduled making calls, doing meetings, and this was kind of my balance because I had, uh, I used to go to gym, I used to read, uh, usually I do audio books, and those things kind of helped me to stay tuned, right? Now what I do, I, um, I have sleep mode on my phone after certain hours, I don't really give a chat who's gonna call me, I just don't answer. If I don't want to answer, I'm not gonna answer. Plus I put my priorities, right? Look, I'm gonna talk about it, maybe not a lot of people talk about it, but we're all gonna die, right? And I think about it pretty often. Not in a, uh, how to say that, uh, pessimistic, negative, yeah, yeah. pessimistic way, you know, I'm gonna die, what I'm gonna do, no. I'm just thinking about, okay, what is my priorities? I wanna spend time with my, uh, for example, mother, father, I'm gonna give them a call to find out how they're doing, because they're, uh, they're in Russia, they come here and they spent winters here. I'm in contact with them like, two times a week, at least, you know, because I have a daughter now, of course they call more often, not because of me, <laughs> because of the granddaughter, they love her, you know, they want to see her. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm asking myself, uh, the way it is, right? We not uh, gonna leave forever, right? I'm thinking to myself, okay, what I prefer to do right now, to spend time with the family, to call my father, to call, I don't know, my friend, or to do something else. And this is my kind of type of balance plus, Guys, meditation, it works. It's something that <laughs> when you don't know anything about it, it sounds too like uh, mystic, but once you kind of learn about it more and more, you realize, okay, this is something, I guess, you have to, you have to do it. Meditation, gym, yoga, for me personally, those things that keep me balanced. But of course, I'm not always balanced. Maybe I sound like, but no. Spend time with yourself. When you were talking about cooking, right? As I said, I do cook sometimes. It's like you meditate, right? Yeah. You just do on your own, you know, with your own thoughts. Maybe you go for, I don't know, bicycle, like uh, walking, yeah. anything. Anything where you just spend time with yourself. Because in our environment right now, you, especially if you're an entrepreneur, right? You're like, you have, as you see right now, right? A lot of conversation, a lot of new people. Then you go to social media, you go to calls. There's a lot of things going on during the day and you need to learn how to be just with yourself. And sometimes it's not easy to, you know, I'll be honest with you. But once you realize, I can tell you from my experience, when I go to gym, I don't do personal trainings because I just want to be with myself, you know? And this is a way of meditation kind of thing. Guys. Let's try again. Oh, hey.